Our next uh, speaker is um, going to be Dr. And, and Professor Xavier Mariette from uh, France. It'll be the ninth annual uh, Charles Porter Lecture in, in memory of the co-founder of CCR ROB. Um, Charles in, uh, encouraged a new rheumatologist on staff to start a meeting in the basement, and then he encouraged me to move it down to Destin, and uh, so we miss Charles. He was a great guy. Um, Dr. Mariette is an MDA PhD, is professor of rheumatology, head of the rheumatology department at uh, the Hopital Bicentre. I'm not, I don't, my wife speaks French, I don't speak French, but Bicentre, and, um, and he's at the University of Paris. He um, received his MD and PhD at the University of Paris and a uh, medical fellow in Paris, a research fellow uh, in um, the um, Hopital St. Louis in Paris. He's co-founder and um, president of the Ratio Group, uh, which was the French National Registry on the Safety of TNF Blockers. He's president of the Scientific Committee of the French Society of Rheumatology, coordinator of the National Registry uh, for Autoimmunity and Rituximab and the Arensia and Rheumatoid Arthritis. He's a member of the Scientific Committee of ULAR since um, 2009. He's more than 225 peer review uh, publications, and he's going to give us a talk this morning on long-term safety of TNF blockers. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much, David, for this kind introduction. Thank you very much for this invitation uh, in uh, this very nice uh, vacation destination but invitation not for vacation, but for working, and for working about a, a subject which is a, a very important for everybody of us. We all treat patients with TNF blockers now for 12 years in our office, and clearly now it's time to address the question of uh, long-term safety of these drugs, these drugs which are more and more used in our rheumatology activity. What are the tools available for addressing this important question of long-term safety of a drug in clinical practice? We have different types of tools, and I'd like to uh, share you uh, that if each tool can bring some different uh, responses to the question, but each tool is useful for addressing this type of questions. First, we have the randomized control trials, but as you know, randomized control trials uh, uh, j just are run for six months, one year, no more, and so we cannot address really the question of long-term safety. Uh, but uh, we have now meta-analysis of these RCTs, and these RCTs are the best way for comparing biologics to another drug because these RCTs are randomized. So there is no bias because, thanks to randomization. We have also extension of RCTs, but extension of RCTs, there is an obvious bias, which is, the, the, this bias is the fact that the patients who are included in these extension studies are the patients who tolerate the drug by definition. So this bias is always present, and I like to emphasize this bias, which is not emphasized enough sometimes by the companies which present these long-term extension safety trials. And the third tool we have is the registries or observatories. This is a very interesting tool because these registries concern real life patients. The patients you see every day in your office, the same patients, and you know that the real life patients are not the same patients as the patients who are included in the randomized control trials. These registries have been set up in most of the countries in the US, in Europe, and these registries are very useful for addressing long-term safety in real-life patients. And we also have post-marketing follow-up, which can be very interesting for detecting some rare severe adverse events, and I will show you an example of that. So the registries have been clearly a great progress for addressing this question of long-term safety, and here is an example just of European registries. I apologize for not having a, a slide uh, on uh, the type of registry in the, in the US, but in the US it's a little different. We, there are registries, very important registries in the US, we'll speak of that uh, later, but you also have in the US administrative database from insurance companies which can be useful, but which have also some disadvantages comparing with classical registries. 
you can see the different registries in different European countries. And uh, the most classical registries are this registry from Sweden, the artist registry, from UK, the BSBR, and also from Germany. In these three kinds of registries, you include patients at the beginning, patients treated with anti-TNF or with biologics, and you also have patients treated with classical DMARDs. Of course, it's not the same patients. And there is a bias because the patients treated with classical DMARs are not as severe as the patients treated with biologics. So you have to adjust the results if you want to compare the populations. But you have patients included at the beginning of the treatment with the drug, and you have a control group. So it is uh, the classical methodology of registry. But you can have also other type of registries, and I like to, to show you the, the possible interest of that. It's what we did, for example, with ratio, and I, I will speak again of ratio, because in ratio, we only focused on three very rare but very severe adverse events, TB, opportunistic infections, and lymphoma, and our objective way was to collect all the patients treated with anti-TNFs in our country at the time uh, of this uh, uh, registry. We also have in France registries dedicated to specific drugs like uh, to rituximab, air, or with abatacept with the registries aura. So a number of registries are available in, in Europe and the US for addressing the questions. So in this talk, I'd like to discuss with you several topics which are the main topics, the main concerns concerning biologics in rheumatic disease patients. And these topics are listed on this slide. And let's begin now by the question of severe infection. This question was addressed in a meta-analysis of randomized control trials by Tim Bongart and colleague in 2006 in the JAMA. And you all know this meta-analysis of trial with infliximab and adalimumab, the monoclonals, uh, and you all know that this meta-analysis found that there was an increased risk of severe infection multiplicated by two in patients treated with anti-TNF uh, compared with patients treated with classical, with placebo in these randomized controlled trials. We now have a, a very recent new meta-analysis of uh, uh, tolerance of all biologics uh, in uh, randomized control trials, not only in array, but also in other uh, inflammatory diseases. So these meta-analyses have been conducted by the Cochrane Library. It has been recently published in 2011, as you see here. And this meta-analysis of RCTs is rather reassuring, because if you look at all the biologics used in inflammatory, mediated inflammatory diseases, you see that the relative risk of infectious, uh, severe infectious is 1.14, uh, so, and it's not significant. It's a, a little increased, but it's not significant. It could be some differences between the drugs. I, I, I will not go in the details of this study, but you see that the anti-TNFs, which is the subject of this morning, are around in the middle, maybe except certolizumab, but it could be some methodologic concerns about this specific uh, increased risk of infection, of serious infection in RCTs uh, using sertolizumab. We have the RCTs, meta-analysis of RCTs, and we have registries. And what do registry tell about this possible increased risk of serious infection with uh, TNF blockers? I gave you on this slide uh, six, seven examples of uh, registries uh, compared with the meta-analysis from Bongart in 206. You, you show this increased risk with the meta-analysis, and you can see that some registries found an increased risk of infection, but other did not find any increased risk of severe infection. How can we solve this discrepancy? If we deal with the BSR BR registry uh, in the UK, you see there is no overall increased risk of registry. But if you look at the data, period by period, you can see that actually there is an increased risk of serious infection at the beginning of the treatment, during the first year of the treatment, with the three anti-TNFs compared with uh, the metotrexate, the classical DMARDs. After one year, there is no difference between the drugs. How can we explain this fact? Actually, actually there were three main explain explanations. The first one could be a 
a true, a real risk, increased risk of serious infection at the beginning of the treatment with 